afternoon, everybody. Uh, apologies to people who are here in Kent who would have seen quite a few of these slides about two weeks ago. Um, so uh, let's just bear with us. There are a few differences from what I did uh, in Ashford two weeks back. Um, I used to work at the GLA until I retired a couple of years ago, and uh, I've been working with Peter Brett Associates uh, for the, since early last year on various, various projects. So that's how I got involved with Christina and, uh, and, and Richard. And what I'm aiming to do, really, is, is to kind of I've called this demographic perils, it could be demographic pitfalls or pratfalls or whatever really. Um, it's, it's really just looking through the, what's happened since the 2011 census, the results have come out. Some of the data which is a bit iffy and is being used in projections and you know, so what to look out for and uh, what might be on the horizon to, to improve our life generally. Um, right, so these, these data, they, I mean so a selection of material that's come out from the census uh, since July last year, which are really the, the, the essential elements that have been used by ONS and CLG in producing their estimates and subsequently the CLG household projections so far. I mean, the, the key thing is that uh, even with the releases that they had available, they didn't have um, representative information at local level by age and gender of representative, or even age, gender and marital status, uh, for instance. Um, so they, they were um, sort of aiming at, at a target based upon total households by type, um, even if they didn't actually have who was the charge of the uh, who was in charge of the roost, if you like. So uh, what have we seen? Um, the, the this has got 2011 bidder estimates on compared to the 2001 bidder estimates and the 20 the most recent ONS and CLG projections for population and households for England. And what you see is that over the decade, we did have an increase in both population and in households. But that increase in population was more than had been estimated, stroke projected, and the increase in households was less. So if we look at that in terms of differences at 2011, half a million-ish more people, but nearly 300,000 fewer households in England. And if we were to unpick the household change even more significantly, there was about a million fewer one-person households than have been projected. There were about 400,000 additional households that were couples with their adult children or with other adults in the, in the household, mostly their adult uh, independent children who haven't left home yet. Um, and there was an increase of about 300,000 other households, so these are households without families, um, so kind of gr groups of young people sharing accommodation. So what we see is a pattern of fewer younger people um, leaving the, the, uh, their, home, their, 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 their family home and, and living independently, and that caused the majority of this shift of not so many households has been projected. Obviously, there's a recession effect in that data. Um, in terms of the population, the half a million people, does this, does this do a, oh there we are, you can see that in this area here from a, you know, the late teens to, to sort of nearly 40, this is where um, the red being the estimate, um, it shows more people than have been, um, than have been uh, previously projected. It, it's a, it's a half a million approximately more people moving into the country and they're in you know, key working ages, clearly, um, but not necessarily such key ages for household representation. And the impact of that with more people, fewer households, is that the average household size, uh, instead of having, whoops, sorry, uh, uh, it is hardly changed at all um, from 2001 to 2011. Um, that's the England figure. Most local authorities follow that pattern. The average household size um, did fall, but it didn't fall as fast, anywhere near as fast as has as, as been projected by CLG. Uh, there were a few exceptions, but uh, by and large, that is the pattern that you see across the country. Now, looking at um, actual midyear estimates, you, you won't be able to read anything on this, this slide, but not to worry about that. Um, this is the difference as a percentage in the population that ONS have rolled forward as their estimates for 2011 compared to what they then ended up estimating once the census results were available. And, uh, whoops, no, I pressed the right button. Um, so down here, you know, some authorities 
and we haven't got all the names of 300 and whatever it is authorities, but you know the, 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 these are the ones where there's a big a big decline, um, including the City of London, Cambridge, Wokingham, and here we've got the ones where there's much more many more people found than being previously estimated. Brent, <coughs> Newham um, is up there, Lambeth uh, as, as well. I'm going to take um, later on two examples to show you some of the effects of this. Um, because I had them available, I'd done them before. Uh, one's Runnymede, um, which would be down here at about there. It's quite on, on the fringe, it's about with a loss of 7.8% of the population. And the other one is Shepway, which would be around here with a gain of about over 6% of its population compared to the previously rolled forward estimates. I'm going to show you later some of the impact of, of, of these, this variation. Um, one thing that uh, we have now got in the analysis of population change between 2001 and 2011 is called unattributable change. ONS said it might be that we got the 2001 population wrong, it might be we've got the 2011 population wrong, it could be we've got the estimates of internal migration wrong, it could be we've got the estimates of international migration also wrong. Um, any, any combination of those four factors uh, could have caused them to then add unattributable change to, in order to, to square the results of their population estimates between 2001 and 2011. I've taken just one year in the, um, in the decade. It's, I mean, it, it's about average, so you see Brent would have actually had 29,000 people added to its population. Um, and Leeds, 39,000 people re re removed, more or less. See, so Shepway and Runnymede, my two examples, um, around 600, one way or 600, the other. Um, but this, is, this becomes important in, in how we analyse what changes occurred and therefore what changes might be projected to go on into the next uh, 20 years or so. If we look at that in terms of percentage of the population, um, a bit fairer perhaps because we haven't got the big authorities with big numbers. Um, the extremes, the Isles of Scilly and, and, and the City of London, so small populations, but let's not bother too much about those. But you can see that Cambridge has is, is got 1.3% of its population, um, that's in one year, um, because of unattributable change, and Westminster minus nearly 1.5%. So my two examples, Running Mead and Shepway, are in the top 10. If you ignore Scilly, um, Shepway would be the 10th, in fact. There's somebody between Richmondshire and Shepway. Can't remember who. Um, so this is uh, this unattributable change uh, is is there for 2001, two to 2010, 11, and ought to be considered as part of the background to any projection that's done based upon current populations. Um, and I'll come to that uh, in a little while. Um, we have had interim projections from ONS, um, and th these are the basic features which they took on board. The, um, the what's in red are the important bits, really. Um, it was a lazy projection in some ways. There was a demand for it from, uh, I think it was CLG or whatever, um, to produce a projection, and they just said, okay, we've got a new population, 2011 video estimate, we'll just whack that in and use all the old rates we've used in our 2010 projections. So I say it's lazy because they didn't readjust the rates to allow for the change in populations, especially these authorities which are on the extreme ends of the previous graph with, with much more population found or maybe fewer people found. So those rates are, in, many, in, in those cases, very dubious. Um, and that's rates particularly for out-migration to the rest of the country, the rest of England. Um, In-migration from England is also dependent upon rates, but rates based upon the origins. So, there is an issue there for some authorities which might be adjacent to authorities whose population was re-estimated as being particularly different and therefore the number of migrants expected to flow from between the two would therefore be uh, susceptible to, to inaccuracy. Um, international migration, um, there's no change in the assumption, absolutely um, the same as before. Um, so these are the key issues that we get because of, the, of those bits in red. And the most important one really is, is this. Um, the rates could be too high or too low, and certainly for migration, you do get 
the possibility of a perverse result. Uh, an authority which had an increased population you'd expect it to have more migrants coming to it in the projection actually has fewer, and I'll explain that uh, later on. In fact, there is um, a paper produced by the Central and Local Government Information Partnership Population Group, which came out um, about a year ago, October last year, which was in fact an open letter effectively to the CLG and ONS saying that for many authorities, these 2011 interim population projections were not fit for purpose. So if anyone hasn't seen that, I'm going to have a copy of that paper, um, you can email me and I'll, I'll send you a copy. Um, right, I've got some examples of uh, this perversity. This is Newham, um, an authority which had a big increase in its population after the census. And for births, you see, therefore, more population, therefore the number of births is, is, is actually projected to increase. Now on this scale, that is about a thousand births. Um, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't make much difference short-term in number of households that's going to be produced, um, but it is a, a key inaccuracy. But, but then you get um, up here the number of out-migrants. The population was bigger, the rates haven't been adjusted, therefore they assumed about 4,000 more people were leaving the borough than, than previously, rather than actually, I mean, the migration being more positive to human um, because their population is estimated to be higher. So that's the perversity. And the down at the bottom, you get what net migration is. This is net migration within England, by the way. Um, so you'd expect their net migration to actually be higher. In fact, it's, it's lower. Um, my other example is, is Westminster, um, and it's just gone the other way. So with a huge difference here in migration, its population fell, so the out-migration actually fell as well. Um, and in fact, this, 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 this has changed from having an estimated outflow to the rest of the country to an estimated inflow for an authority which lost about 40,000 people in its estimate. I mean, quite wrong, quite perverse, and so therefore beware if you've got an authority which is on the extremes of the, um, of these, uh, of that 2011 um, change in the, in the middle estimates. Right, um, moving on to the CLG's household projections. There's, there's good and there's bad in here. Um, They've, um, they use the, the new population projections. Whoops, sorry. Um, so we've got the new population projections in. Um, the representative rates, the local representative rates, only go up to 2001. Um, and from the census, they've got household types, but not household types by um, age of the representative. And you've got the local communal population. So there's some good and there's some things we'd like to see improved in that. Um, so in my view, you know, the, the strengths of the COG projections is that we've got a long series of census data, but that stops in 2001. <coughs> However, there's a use of more recent data for England to kind of fill the gap in at the moment, and they do have the census totals of households as part of the, part of the process. Now, the weaknesses, that we, the weaknesses of COG projections, whichever year they do it, are going to be the population projection that's fed into it. I mean, it's supposed to be a, a neutral migration-based projection based upon five years of experience. Um, so there's always going to be arguments about that, whichever year it is that's taken, whatever base, but certainly more arguments on the 2011 than previously. Um, and I've mentioned the lack of representative rates. And the problem, the key problem we have, is that the rates have fallen in some cases between 2001 in 2011 with the credit crunch recession issues and how do you project the out of the recession um, key, a key point really um, as an example of uh, what changes there have been in terms of the um, projected um, representative rates I just happen to have something from Maidstone Rob's over there uh, sorry to take your example it is it's okay, it's okay. Um, <laughs> What you, what you see here is that the, this, this is the 2011, COG 2011 projections. Um, and you know, here we've got the dec declining activity rates for males in these years from about 15 to mid 40s. And so this is where certainly the rates that we've seen from COG's use of labor force survey data have implied this is where the problem area is. It's not really quite such a obvious um, for, for females. 
um, because in fact the rates have increased, but these increases are not as big as they've been projected by the CLG 2008 projections. Um, up, up here, um, the, the projection is that the rates will actually fall uh, for older women. That isn't anything to do with the recession, it's to do with men living longer. Um, and therefore, couples stay together longer, and the, the, the husband, the male partner, is the household representative. Therefore, fewer women are available to be household representatives. So that's, a, that's another demographic feature of a positive nature of men's life expectancy catching up with women's. Um, now, this is looking, this is a bit jumbled, I know, but what you can see is this, these key ages between 15 and mid 40s, the, um, the, the reduction in the projected, uh, the, um, projected household representative rates um, at 2011 and 2021 for both men and women. So, very serious reductions um, for the most, the youngest, and really almost no change up here for males by the age of the early 40s. But in here, 5, 10% reductions. So that's, this is the area of uncertainty, really. How will these, act, will these rates, you know, over the next decade or so, pick up towards where the CLG 2008 projections uh, had them? Um, one analysis, which I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, are familiar with, is done by Alan Holmans in uh, Town and Country Planning in August. Uh, if, you've, if you've seen this special supplement that was within the TCPA uh, journal. Um, and he has sort of looked at it and said, well, we had nearly 300,000 fewer households, but the population was bigger. So on an equal population basis, that, oh, whoops, sorry, um, that is effectively uh, 375,000 fewer households at 2011 than expected. He analyzes this as being about 200,000 because of the recent, um, Im more recent immigrants, young immigrants, who, would be, who are expected to have much lower household representative rates, much more likely to be living in shared, sharing um, uh, accommodation. Um, and he says that's unlikely to be reversed in the near future leaving about 175,000 as being a sort of recession caused uh, these people not to be able to form their own households uh, by 2011, as expected. And he assumes this will gradually reverse. Um, I mean, in, in the paper, he gives levels of, of, of change from 2015 onwards, and you can sort of analyze that if you like or if you like. But anyway, he, so he's come up with some variations here. Um, but this, in his, his, his modified trend, he brings up that we would actually go up to uh, uh, 4.49 4 million uh, households in 20 years, about 225,000 a year. But um, and that will be uh, uh, higher after 2021 than in the current uh, decade, but averaging about 225,000 a year. So, so that's significantly more than CLG's current, uh, current projection. Um, right, I'll go on to my examples of, of what's gone wrong for authorities now. This is Shepway. Um, Shepway. Now that, uh, its population was estimated to be about 6,000 more at 2011 than, um, than uh, previously. And because of this perverse nature of higher population, therefore you're going to lose more people if you don't change the rates, it's, pop, it's actual, the CLG's, uh, sorry, the ONS projection um, is really not moving very, very rapidly, it's very slow. Um, this is my projection based upon trends over the last five years, uh, significantly higher, um, and fairly, you know, more, pretty close in terms of overall change to the ONS 2008 projections. And so the ONS and CLG 2008 are the basis of how many homes, what homes, where, uh, which probably sits on top of the inspector's uh, desk whenever he is looking at some authorities' uh, current local plan. Um, net migration, here you see what's happened in Shepway, quite positive migration, although declining uh, through the decade. Um, the, this is the ONS 2008, ONS 2010, and in spite of it being right up here, this is the CLG, uh, sorry, the ONS 2011, very, very low levels of, of net inflow to the authority uh, 
Um, it really doesn't reflect trends at all. Uh, this is my sort of based upon an average over the last five years. Households, again, you see the same sort of thing. Um, we're starting off at a much higher level based upon the census numbers than, than we had been previously led to believe. But the CLG 2011, following the population, is, is rising very slowly, whereas my projection based upon trends are using basically the same CLG uh, 2011 rates. Um, it probably more or less pretty much the slightly faster rate of increase of households than the CLG 2008. So CLG 2011 really leads you astray on that, on that one. Um, average household size is fallen in Shepway, um, but not as fast as, as projected previously. There's the CLG, uh, current and mine, a bit quicker. Um, it, it's one of the rare ones I've done where it actually falls lower than the CLG figures at, 20, um, at, at 2031. I think largely because of the aging population structure that we've got in that authority. Runny Mead, the other way around. Um, Runny Mead's population uh, here much lower than had be previously been expected, but the, CLG, the ONS projection shooting up rapidly because lower population means you won't lose as many people in, in, in the way that ONS have lazily done their projection. Um, net migration, here we are. Out of order, really, compared to what's happened in the past. Uh, this is what uh, ONS have done. All the other projections are pretty close. Um, households, again, um, this, is, this is my projection, which is a bit lower than the uh, CLG 2008, but the, sorry, yeah, but the C, this, this should say CLG, of course. Um, the CLG uh, 2011 rising remarkably sharply, most unlikely outcome, to be honest. Um, so, right, uh, yes. uh, average household size, similar situation, but starting off at the uh, higher levels of running need. Now, next week, we're expecting ONS to produce national population projections. Um, that, that's you know, all of the four home countries, plus the UK, of course. Um, and we would expect them to have a lower international migration assumption. International migration has declined quite, quite quickly over the last year or so, um, so we would expect that to be incorporated in the assumption, so that's lower than the 2010 projection. Um, next spring, whoops, wrong one, um, we would expect local population projections to be produced by ONS, uh, linked into the England projection that's going to kind of come out next week. Um, and the migration input to that will be based upon this period 2007 to 12. So how much they incorporate the unattributable change into their assumptions uh, is to be seen. Um, and then, no dates, but history shows later in the year, CLG will convert this to household projections. So that will be the next real sort of how many homes benchmark, if you like. Um, so key messages, age structure is really important, especially those young 15 to 44 year olds. What are they doing in the, in the estimates and projections that you, you may have to, to handle? Um, oh, sorry, um, the annual migration trends over the last decade, and particularly the last five years, you need to look very closely at those. I mean, does the two projections reflect what's happened or are they off the wall? Um, and overall, we'd expect that the CLG 2011 projections, are they are better in most cases. Um, obviously, the examples from the extreme ends are very dodgy. Um, but household representative rates, as I've shown you for Maystone, are worth, worth checking out, and which way are they going to go, and then look, look at the household types in relation to young adults. Is that, is that a realistic outcome uh, to, to be planning for? Um, we don't know about unattributable change coming out into these uh, 2011 to 2012 projections. That's going to be something which will be a surprise to us all, possibly, come, come next April or so. Um, and all I can say is that we all expect that CLG 2012 projections will be a significant improvement upon what they've produced so far. So that's my contribution. Any questions? Was that perfect for a post lunch slot? <laughs> Um, to keep us all awake and on our toes. Uh, has anybody got any thoughts, any disagreements with that interpretation, or any questions for John about the statistics and what he's said?
does it sort of chime with the way you're approaching? That's what goes into those. But compared to the 2008 figures, which were based effectively on the very peak of the economic cycle and the housing boom, I'm just wondering to what extent it's fair to say that the more recent figures reflect issues if they're based on a, uh, a trend which covers perhaps the end of the, the boom and, and the sort of start of the recession. So is, is, is it... Is it that that undermines the 2011, or it's a fairer one? And I was just wondering how that squared with your sort of final comment about the 2011 ones generally being better than 2008, or was that more a sort of a mechanistic sort of Okay, right. Well, um, the, the 2008 uh, CLG household projections did have England data up until like, 2009, so it did actually have already the first inklings of the downturn in rep household representative rates in the early year or so of, of the recession, so that was already in there. But the way that um, CLG projected it was really to kind of almost kind of say, well, that's just a blip, it's gonna come back on trend very rapidly. Now this interim projection, they haven't got the detailed data for 2011 to go into it for each local authority. So the basic assumption, given they're only going forward 10 years, was to kind of continue that kind of 20, 2001, 2011 trend. So it does, it really does hit very hard in terms of it's got a recession effect for, for an extra, well, have it over many years, you know, for a rejected forward for about nine years uh, on top of what we've already had since 2008. So it, it's, a, it's a view of the market which I don't think will, will last when the 2012 projections are done because they'll have more detailed 2011 census data. They'll have two more years of data from the um, labor force survey nationally to, to look at and has there been a recovery and then make a more solid view as to whether that recovery is, is sustainable or, or uh, whether, whether it will maintain uh, relatively low levels of representative rates for certainly these younger younger male groups which show, show up strongly in what I showed you from the Thank you. Sorry, I realised I was just concentrating on the migration. Mm. On the, mi the migration um, is also an issue, certainly, because um, you know, I used to work for London uh, through the first few years of the recession and you could see the big impact in terms of the, the net outflow from London to the rest of basically the southeast and eastern regions. It, it went down from an average of around about 80,000 a year up until 2007 and by 2009 it was half that, more like 40 and it's only re recovering gently now, it's probably not even reached 50,000 yet. Um, you know, that was, that was an issue of, of you know, mortgage availability and the market just having collapsed. And what we noticed in that flow was that the, the group who were proportionately most affected um, were the elderly. They weren't the, the families, though they were affected clearly. Um, families with young children who we would have expected to have left London didn't leave in such numbers, but proportionally it was the over 55s, over 65s who, who were stuck much more by the, by the recession in the housing market. And whether those people live long enough to actually achieve their goal of moving to Hertfordshire or whatever, um, you just don't know. Um, they, they might die in London or they might never, they might never leave London. Hertfordshire isn't going to have any houses, so well, not going anywhere. <laughs> or wherever, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, there, there are uncertainties of both the migration issue and also the household representative rates. Does that help? Yeah. Um, now, Neil was very involved in the What Homes how many homes? What homes where? What homes where? On homes the homes.org website. Yes. yes. That way around. Um, so, Neil, have you got any yeah. comments? Um, I mean, John is undoubtedly right that if you look at the extreme results from the latest projections, you get some very funny numbers. Um, I can think of one local authority fairly close to where I live. Um, if you believe the latest projections and compare them with the previous ones, the number of households they're going to have to accommodate has gone up by 40%, and that must be causing your headache. Um, on the other hand, one, I think, needs to step back a little bit and ask, well, what's the underlying problem here? Um, it, effectively, the, the, there's a very simple way of looking at it, and I welcome your view on this, John. Um, the new projections take a view on the overall household growth in England as a whole. And effectively what they say is that household growth in England as a whole over the 10 years that the projections cover is going to be 10% slower than it was under the 2008 base projections. So it's gone down from 245,000 extra households a year to 221 extra households a year. A 10% reduction. 
induction. Now, question. Um, do we think that that's a sensible overall fi figure? Is the, is the big picture badly wrong? If the big picture isn't badly wrong, then the rest of the discussion is really about how you share out those households between local authorities. Because, you know, using the arguments that John's used, you can argue that actually the numbers in terms of household growth for some local authorities are clearly too high. But if the overall number is roughly right, for those that are clearly too high, there must be some that are clearly too low. And I'll probably keep them quiet. So, you know, what's going on here? What, what, what's your view on this, John? Well, you're right. I mean, people are going to keep quiet if the situation is in their advantage. Isn't it? But is I the mean, overall <laughs> number roughly right? Uh, well, I think, you know, the 220 that you've got from CLG 2011, from 2011 to 2021, is likely to, you know, what one would hope, but it's actually a bit wrong. It's, it's a bit too low, really. And I think what Alan has done. Uh, has, has demonstrated the possibility that you know it is at the bottom end of a, of a, of a feasible range. You know, and he hasn't actually raised it an awful lot, to be honest, really, in his modification. Even though, you know, by the, as you move through the 2020s, it does pick up speed uh, uh, in the way he's done it. Um, so it might well be there's a timing factor here, and people have got a bit of a breathing space in the next few years before uh, rates do start to improve, and before people are able to afford to to get the home that they wish. And, you know, the, the young people who are sharing with others will actually break off and break free or even break free from their parents. In that, like the Italian situation where you've got, you know, 39-year-old unmarried men still living with mum and dad but, uh, in the flat. Yeah. Um, uh, don't, they're going to go to that model. Um, but it's, it's, uh, that's the way the projections are implying they're going to go. Absolutely. I, 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 I think that's, that's right. I mean... Uh, Alan has put the numbers back up to roughly where they were. Um, on the other hand, if you look at the comparison between the 2008 numbers and the latest numbers, the latest numbers have much higher population growth rates than the 2008 based numbers, partly because of um, greater international immigration, but there are other factors in play as well, and of course there's the birth rate factor that's distinctly dodgy. Um, but that much greater population growth has been damped by the assumptions that have been made about household formation rates. And, you know, one of the things that people need to appreciate in using the latest household projections is that they are assuming that household formation rates for young adults um, will continue to fall. They have, according to the latest projections produced by DCLG, fallen quite considerably between 2011, 2001 and 2011. And the projections are effectively continuing that trend, so it's going to get worse in terms of the ability of uh, young adults to enter the, the housing market. At least that's the assumption that's implicit in the latest projections. Now, is that right? Or is there going to be um, some move back if you look at Alan's work that John referred to? Um, Alan says that effectively half of that apparent <coughs> reduction in household formation rates is due to the increase in number of recent migrants that we saw in the first decade of this century. And unless there's a further increase, that trend will not continue. And actually, if there's a reduction in the number of new migrants, then there'll be a move back in the other direction. So, you know, I think there are actually pretty good reasons for saying that Alan's being a little cautious on the numbers, and the overall national figure, uh, when it's reworked, could end up, you know, north of 250,000. Um, and if it does end up north of 250,000, effectively what we're talking about here is um, looking at a distribution issue. Um, people shouldn't go around thinking, well, the new projections are wrong, um, therefore it's safe to plan on a lower number. The new projections for some authorities may not be a good guide as to where the extra households are going to end up. Um, but, you know, I think it's pretty sure we're going to have roughly the number of extra households, or probably... Um, you know, a few more, uh, as, as, as the latest projection suggests. It might just be worth putting out South Worcestershire only this morning. I think got their inspectors next time. Right. And I've only skipped, skipped over it and we need to sit down with John and work out the mechanics, but the inspectors taken 2011 as far as 2021 and then an index back to 2008 headship rates and household formation assumptions thereafter. And that's what he's instructed them to do, and they will have to go back and redo all their numbers along that, or right or wrong. And no doubt tomorrow we'll have a different inspector give us a different, a different interpretation. Yeah. But 
there is a little baby tiny bit of guide, clear guidance there as to progress in the interim. That's yeah. a relatively straightforward thing to do, mm. what they've been asked to do. It, it, it's, the, the, the household projection recited there beyond 2021 is done on exactly that basis. So they'll index the 2021 rates to what change the, the uh, CLG 2008 showed. And so that's, that's how those things are. Okay, thank you. And a question at the back. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. I think we just had some work done by Edgerton and they were looking at the impact of the CLG 